our series is called Semana Santa. And the first week we talked about Balik Balik. If you're here, you missed out on Balik Balik. Okay lang po. Pwede kayong bumalik next week. Wala na po yung Balik Balik. Ang ibig lang sabihin po ng Balik Balik, return, return. Come back, come back. But we were talking about traditions in the Filipino context na tuwing Holy Week, napakarami nating ginagawang mga tradisyon, pabalik-balik tayo sa mga tradisyon, not necessarily knowing why we do it. And that's why next year, maaasahan po natin, pagsapit ng Easter next or ng Holy Week next week uh, next year, marami na naman pong, uh, gagawin na naman nila yung traditions na yan. Because we fail to experience what the true meaning of the suffering of Jesus Christ is all about. And that's what we talked about on the second week, Pako, anong suffering ni Jesus Christ on the cross. We discussed last week na wala na tayong kailangan gawin. Yung ginawa ni Jesus Christ on the cross, sabi niya, tetelestai, it is finished. Wala nang kailangan dagdagan. Wala nang kailangan ayusin. He has finished the suffering for us. Tayo dapat yung nakapako sa cross dahil tayo mga makasalanan. But because of what Jesus did, tapos na po. We can now come into the presence of the Heavenly Father. That is our hope. That is our hope. We can come into the presence of the Holy Father dahil tapos na po yung suffering ni Jesus Christ. And this week, yun po ang pag-uusapan natin. Yung bagong pag-asa, yung the new hope that each and every believer has because Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Uh, speaking of hope, parang mahirap intindihin ng hope. For the longest time, as Filipinos, bilang mga Pilipino, lagi tayong na ilalagay sa isang lugar, isang sitwasyon kung saan we question our hope. In fact, our nation, we could say, is a nation filled with garbage. Meron tayong bundok na tinatawag na payatas. Meron tayong tinatawag na Smoky Mountain. People actually from other nations know the Philippines because of that situation. We are a nation of typhoons, earthquakes, volcano eruptions. Many people ask, is there hope? Bilang mga Pilipino, paulit-ulit na lang. Praise be to God, 2013 was the only year in the past two to three years na hindi tayo nagkaroon ng uh, relief goods. Meron ba last year, 2014? Parang hindi ko naalala na nagkaroon tayo ng relief evacuation or relief goods uh, operations last year. But halos every year na lang, merong napakalakas na bagyo na dumad- dumadalo dito sa Pilipinas. And it seems hopeless, paulit-ulit na lang. Um, something that's hopeless in our nation today is the increasing or the rise of HIV, AIDS sickness among Filipinos. Nakalagay dito in 2000 or in 1984, 20 years ago or 21 years ago, there were only two AIDS victims. In 2014, there has been there have been 543 AIDS victims. Tignan nyo yung increase ng chart. Is there hope? Is there hope in our nation? Kahit ano pa sabihin natin sa mga tao, avoid sex, casual sex. Sige pa rin ang sige. And there it is. The results are seen in this chart. Uh, in, in last year, from women age 15 to 19, Filipina women, or Filipina women, Filipinas age 15 to 19, one out of ten are already uh, tinatawag na teenage pregnant. One out of ten, kung hilera kayo na puro babae, isa sa inyo, pregnant na, at the age of 15 to 19 years old. That is our society. I ask you, is there hope for our nation? Is there hope? Ang nakakalungkot, itong picture na to. Nasa Biz News Asia, Bulletin Today, the senators and congressmen who got the most money, the Philippines' biggest criminal syndicate, no other than, sabi dyan sa news na yan, Philippine Senate. Ang malungkot niyan, next year, we will be voting again for our newly elected senators and congressmen. Is there hope? I'm not saying everyone is corrupt. Marami pong hindi corrupt sa ating mga government officials. Believe me. But, paulit ng paulit ng paulit na lang. May pag-asa ba ang ating bayan? Iboboto mo ba? Okay. O magiging corrupt din. 
Is there hope for our nation? Sinasabi mo, Dennis, puro national naman yan. Eh. O sige, tignan natin yung mga local. In fact, tignan natin yung mga individual lives natin. Do you have hope, kapatid? I put on, on, on the screen just a few things that bother us, that depress us, that gives us stress in our lives. Do you have hope? If you can identify to at least isa dyan, rejection. Ikaw ba'y na-reject na kung ikaw estudyante? Kamusta yung grado mo? Mare-resurrect pa ba yan? Yung mga grado mo. Yung mga utang mo, pataas na lang ng pataas, hindi mo na mabayaran. Is there hope of getting out of indebtedness? Is there hope in getting out of a relationship kung saan yung asawa mo puro na lang bugbog, sampal, tadyak sa'yo? Hindi ka makareklamo. Is there hope in that relationship? Is there hope when your children are rebellious? Is there hope when you are a drug addict? If you're addic- addicted to pornography, is there hope for you? Is there hope when yung ninanasa mong trabaho sa abroad, hindi ka mabigyan-bigyan ng, ng visa? Is there hope? If you're sick for so many years, pabalik-balik ka na lang sa hospital, is there hope for you? Well, that's the big question. Is there hope? To study whether there is hope or not, pupunta tayo sa libro ng, or sa sulat ni Peter, yung unang sulat ni Peter sa mga Hudyo. Peter, as you all know, is an apostle to the Jews as Paul is an apostle to the Gentiles. Si Peter po, kaiba-ibang tao. Of all the disciples of Jesus Christ, including each and every one of us here today, of all the disciples of Jesus Christ, Peter and the Apostle Peter alone holds the distinction of ever walking on water. Meron ba sa inyo nakapaglakad na sa tubig? Only Peter. If you have walked on water, tell me about it. I'd like to know. Peter was able to walk on water. And yet, after a few seconds, si Peter din ay lumubog at humingi ng saklolo sa Panginoong Jesus. Peter is the person who was commended by Jesus Christ. Nung sinabi ni, ni Peter, you are the Son of God, you are the Messiah. Anong sabi ni, ni Jesus sa kanya, Peter? Yang sinabi mong yan, hindi galing sa tao yan. Galing sa Diyos yan. Sinabi ni God, ni Jesus yan tungkol kay Peter. And yet, after a few verses, here is Jesus telling Peter, get behind me, Satan. Kaiba-ibang tao si Peter. Bold and yet medyo mabilis masyado, agresibo masyado. We want to know what Peter went through. Kasi si Peter yung nagsabing, nung nag-alisan na yung mga ano, nung nagsabi na si Jesus na ipapako ako sa cross, mamamatay ako, si Peter yung nagsabing, hindi kita papayagan, hindi kita iiwan. Kahit umalis na yung iba, hindi ako aalis. And yet, it is Peter who betrayed Jesus Christ how many times? Not once, not twice, three times. But what happened to Peter? Nung namatay si Jesus sa cross, nag, nagtakbuhan yung mga, no, yung mga disciples, nagtaguan sila. Some of them went back to becoming fishermen. Lahat sila natakot. Nagtatago sila. And yet, something happened to Peter that after Jesus restored him, He started preaching with boldness. Walang katakot-takot. Dun sa preaching niya sa Pentecost, napakaraming nakarinig sa kanya, napakaraming nagtaka. Sino ba yan? Bakit, bakit tumanggap sila kay Jesus? Sino ba yan? Ordinaryong tao lang yan. Ah. What happened to Jesus? We want to learn that. Why? Because there is something in store for us, in store for us, in the event of resurrection 2,000 years ago. And if we learn, pag natutunan natin kung anong nangyari kay Peter, kung bakit siya naging bold sa pagdeklara ng gospel sa mga Hudyo, 
Maybe something can change. Maybe just like Peter, we too will find hope. And so, pag-aaralan natin, ano yung turning point ni Peter? And we're gonna be reading from 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 6. As we read scripture in honor of the word, may I request you to please stand up, open your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 1, as we read chapter, uh, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to His great mercy, He has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Maraming salamat, Panginoon, that your word is true. Panginoon, as we study this part of scripture, panalangin namin, speak to us. Holy Spirit, kumilos kayo sa aming mga puso. Sa aming mga medyo matitigas ang puso at hindi namin maintindihan, ano ba talaga ang meron dyan sa resurrection na yan? Teach us so that we too, just like Peter, will have hope. And that hope will make us bold to do exactly what Peter did. Lord, we, we pray you bless the preaching of the word this afternoon, that your name will be honored. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may take your seats. Ganda ng amen mo, ah. I like your amen. We are studying three realities in Christ's resurrection. In these three realities, makikita natin kung ano nangyari kay Peter. Peter was writing to the Jews. The Jews from all over what today is Turkey. And yung mga Hudyo po na yan, yan yung mga na-scatter ng mga Hudyo nung panahon ng mga Babylonians, nung sinira, nung na-capture ng Babylonia, yung Jerusalem, na-scatter yung mga Jews all over the world. And itong si Peter were writing to these Jews. Itong mga Jews na to, itong mga Hudyo na to, were being persecuted by the Romans and by the pagans. Yung mga Romans were angry at the Jews kasi ayaw nilang lumuhod at ideklara na si, si uh, Emperor Nero ay Diyos. Dahil doon, galit sila sa mga Hudyo, lalong-lalo na yung mga Hudyong Kristiyano. And so they were being persecuted. Because of this persecution, si Peter po ay sumulat ng Letter sa kanila. And we go to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, where it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to His great mercy, He has caused us to be born again. Take note. Ang nauna po dyan, according to His great mercy, He has caused us to be born again. Ang ibig sabihin ng phrase na yun, it was God who initiated that we be born again. Ibig sabihin po niyan, tulad ng sinabi natin the past few weeks, you and I have nothing to do with our salvation. You and I are sinful. We fall short of the glory of God. Wala tayong magagawa na perfect sacrifice to give to the perfect holy God para tatanggapin tayo ng Diyos. It is only because God initiated by His mercy, He initiated something causing us to become born again. Take note, we cannot take any credit for our salvation. And be sure of this, there is nothing you can do to win your salvation. It's all by what Jesus Christ has done on the cross. So, we have been born again to a living hope. To a living hope. Ano yung living hope na yun? Wonderful expectation of eternal life. If you are a Christian today, kung sinasabi ninyong tinanggap na ninyo si Jesus Christ bilang Panginoon at takapagligtas, have you ever had that instance, that moment in your life na gulong-gulong na kayo sa mundo Tapos sinabi niyo kay Lord, Lord, 
kayo lang kayo babalik. Pwede bang ngayon na? na? Nasabi nyo na ba yun? Or marami pa sa atin medyo, Lord, wag muna, marami pa akong isa-shopping. Have you ever really asked the Lord, Lord, but ang tagal mo? Because what this verse is telling us is if you are born again, if you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have a living hope in you. You are expectant, wonderfully expectant. Come on, Lord, come on. I'm looking forward to eternal life because my life here on earth is not the best life I can have. Life in heaven, that is the best life I can have. Why wait? I'm not telling you to jump off the building, okay? But Lord, kailan? Kailan ka babalik? If you are a Christian, you ought to have that living hope that there is something better than what you have today. Wonderful expectation of eternal life through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Ito po yung sikreto ni Peter. Peter understood that, that living hope na meron siya. Bakit? Kasi si Jesus Christ na resurrect. What does Jesus Christ resurrect mean? It proves that Jesus Christ is God. Sa dinami-daming promises ni Jesus Christ sa Bible, all of that is useless. Sa dinami-daming sakripisyo at suffering ni Jesus Christ sa cross, all of that is useless if He did not resurrect. Yung communion, useless if He did not resurrect. But because Jesus Christ resurrected, it proves He is God. Meditate on that. Dahil nag-resurrect si Jesus Christ, Diyos siya. Now, look at the implication of that. If He is indeed God, lahat ng promises niya sa Bible is true and will come true. If He says, accept me as Lord and Savior, and you will have eternal life, guess what, mga kapatid? You will have eternal life. And it doesn't matter what the other people are saying out there. Ano? Born against? Born again? It does not matter. Why? Sino ba sila? When it is God the Father through Jesus Christ, raising Him from the dead through the Holy Spirit, who is saying eternal life is yours. That is your living hope. Do you have that hope? I hope so. I hope you have the living hope. And it is true. Why? Because He is God. Sinulat ko dito as our first point. The risen Christ is the reason there's a living hope. Without the risen Christ, there is no hope. You will die and that's the end of it. But because He is alive. When we die, the minute you lose your last breath, <gasps> yung next hininga mo, <gasps> wow, I'm in heaven. Yung iba hindi naka-relate. First, reality, we have a living hope. Peter had a living hope, kaya siya bold. Pwede niyang ideklara, Jesus is Lord. Kahit patayin niyo pa ako, okay lang. Kahit i-persecute niyo pa ako, okay lang. Ang derecho ko, langit. I have a living hope. Second, 1 Peter 1 verse 4, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you. Inheritance. Do you know what an inheritance is? Ang in- isang inheritance po ay isang bagay na tinatago ng isang minamahal mo sa buhay. Itinatago niya yan, kung minsan ilalagay nila sa safe yan para ibibigay sa inyo later on in life. It is something you do not deserve. You don't earn it. An inheritance, you don't earn it. The only reason why you have an inheritance is because you have a relationship with the person who's giving you that inheritance. And you have an inheritance, it says. Ano kaya yung inheritance? What's an inheritance? Uh, do you know what this is? 
That's a typewriter machine. Ty, ano? Typing, typewriter. That's a typewriter. Yung typewriter na yan, that is the very typewriter I used when I was a cadet at PMA. Pinahiram po yan sa akin ng aking nanay para paggagawa ko ng mga report ko, medyo mabilis. Typewriter. Yung iba sa inyo, hindi na kayo makarelate. Puro laptop na kasi inaabutan natin, di ba? Alam niyo po ba na yung anak kong si Joshua nahilig diyan sa typewriter na yan? Yan mismo. Nung nakita niya yan sa bahay ng nanay ko, nag-typewriter siya. Ching! Typewriter siya. Nung nakita ng nanay ko, my mother thought it in her heart to give it to my son as an inheritance, as a blessing. To many of you, yung typewriter na yan, walang kakwenta-kwenta. Tama po ba? Tama po ba? mag ka na lang. Di ba? But do you know that to my son, that is treasure. To my son, that is valuable. Alam niyo bakit? It's because of who gave it. His lola. The Bible is telling us in this verse that we have an inheritance and that inheritance is eternal life through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Dahil nag-resurrect si Jesus Christ, you and I, kapatid, we have an inheritance of eternal life. And you know why it is special? It's not because you did something good. It's because it comes from God Himself. He loves you so much that He gave His only Son to die on the cross for us. That inheritance is important. That inheritance is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Alam niyo ibig sabihin yun? It will not decay. Hindi po masisira. Yung typewriter na yan, balang araw, masisira po yun. In fact, hindi ko na nga alam kung saan bibili ng ribbon eh. Ha, Dennis, may ribbon ba ang typewriter? Mm. Masisira yon. At kahit ano pang... Inheritance ang makukuha ninyo, magdi-depreciate po yan. Maging lupa pa yan. It will lose its essence someday. But this inheritance given us, eternal life, will not decay. It is incorruptible. It is without stain at hindi siya magkakaroon ng, ng, ng stain. It will last forever. Do you want that inheritance? Do you have that inheritance? Do you have the hope of getting that inheritance? Itong maganda dyan. Yung inheritance daw niya yan, it is kept in heaven for you. You have an inheritance kept for you in heaven. Ang tanong, aabot ba kayo sa heaven? Will you get to heaven? Or are you downcast right now because of the situation, the circumstances around you na hopeless ka na? Guess what? Your inheritance is being kept in heaven for you and for you alone. Alam nyo ibig sabihin yan? It is reserved for you. Wala nang ibang pwedeng kumuha nung para sa you lang. And guess what? Each and every one of us has it. Maybe you don't understand what it means to have a reservation. Let me give you an illustration. Alam niyo yung upcoming fight? Are you excited for that? Are you wonderfully expecting it? Huh? Are you excited that Pacquiao will beat Mayweather? Parang kulang ako. Kulang yung ano. Wala masyadong taga Jensen dito. But what if I told you, you can actually... Get tickets for that. You can actually get tickets for that. Kasi, alam niyo po ba na sold out na yung tickets? Immediately sold out. But if you had that opportunity to get tickets for it, would you be happy? Would you like to go to Las Vegas? Okay, magkakasi, no? To watch that fight? Simple lang yun. If I told you you had reserved tickets, would you be expectant to have it? Would you be hoping na pagdating ng May 2, nandun ako? Sorry na lang, Pastor Dennis. 
wala ka doon kasi may preaching ka. You see, if you knew you have a reserved house, not just tickets, you have a reserved house in heaven that Jesus Christ is preparing for you, you will have that hope. Na kahit ano pa dinadaanan ko dito sa, sa mundong ito, I will get to heaven someday. Are you excited for that? Ganda ng ticket, di ba? Hirap gawin yan. Ha? My point, the risen Christ is our guarantee of a future hope. If you believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, hindi lang Easter Sunday, may bunny, Easter egg hunting, hindi yon. But the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the grave, if you believe that, you have a future hope. So three realities of Christ's resurrection, a living hope, pangalawa, a future hope, and then pangatlo, a present hope. Hope. Huh, Dennis? A present hope? Dito pa lang pwede na? Yes. Even in our circumstances, even in your depression, even in, in the sadness of your situation, meron ka ng pag-asa. Ngayon na, karon dayon. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 5 says, Who by God's power are being guarded through the faith, through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. You are being guarded. You know what being guarded means? You are being protected. You are being protected in whatever situation you find yourself in. Prino-protectahan ka para hindi ka mahulog at pag nahulog ka, madidisqualify ka na mo makukuha mo yung future hope mo. You are being protected and that is going to be revealed. Yung salvation on the last day. But even at this very moment, you are being protected. Tignan mo yung katabi mo, sabi mo, I'm protected. Don't talk to me. <laughs> so whatever your situation in, in life, you need to declare yourself, I'm protected. I'm protected from that. Yang ganyan, wala na yan. Yang, yang addiction na yan, wala yan. I'm protected from that. Why? Because Jesus Christ resurrected from the dead. Verse 6 says, In this, you rejoice. Ito dapat yung magiging reaction nyo. Natin. We can be stressed, we can be strained, we can be get tired, we might get depressed, but at the end of it, ang pinaka bottom line, we rejoice. Through, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials. What trials are you going through right now? Rejoice because you have a hope. Let me tell you a story. Uh, a, a couple of weeks ago, meron tayong isang member ng church now in uh, Victory Bulacan, Malolos, who, whose wife died. Uh, she contracted cancer three years ago. And after three years of fighting, she finally passed away. Pastor Joey Bonifacio and Marie, his wife, went to the funeral. And during the funeral, nagkaroon ng konting ceremony. Si Marie, when she came home, Marie Bonifacio, when she came home, she made a blog about what happened. And I'd like to share it with you because it spells out what can happen even at a moment of sadness. Sabi dito, on birthdays and Easter, last night I cried my eyes out. Pakihanda yung tissue. A young mom passed away after her three-year-long bout with cancer. I doubly cried when I found out that she left this earth on the day of her eldest daughter's 18th birthday. She had three young girls. Sad things happen to good people and we are left with question marks in our thought bubbles. Why? Bakit? At the memorial service, all three of her sweet young daughters spoke. Laughter mingling with tears, aching pauses at the memories and beautiful photos of their mom and family times together. And then her husband spoke. The man who loved her, 
who aside from his work became her constant partner, confidant, cheerleader, chef, driver, injection giver, stress reliever. He shared how on his first night alone, he opened his wife's iPad and found instructions and a password. His sweet wife had left letters, lots of letters for him and for each of the three girls to read at different stages. She had also left her favorite quotes and songs to be sung, all worship songs for her wake and funeral. He talked about the vows they had shared as husband and wife on their wedding day. I quote, Knowing that it is God's will for me to marry you, I make a commitment to you today to love you with an everlasting love, to live with you in an understanding way. He talked about the joy of having her as his wife. Then he did something very brave and inspiring. In the midst of his tears, he addressed each daughter one by one and spoke words of blessing over each one. He also told the eldest never to think of her birth date with sadness as a date marred by the death of her mother. Instead, to regard that day as a very special day. A day of two combined celebrations. Two birthdays. Her birthday on earth and her mom's birthday in heaven. Two reasons to celebrate. He then proceeded to give each daughter a ring. I was wondering why. Then he spoke. Just as he and his wife had committed through these same rings to love each other unconditionally many, many years ago on their wedding day, he began to speak these words of affirmation now to his daughters. I quote, I make a commitment to you, our daughters, to love you with an eternal love to live with you in an understanding way, never leaving you or forsaking you. He then gave his daughters their rings as a sign of his unconditional fatherly love. Two were the wedding rings he and his wife had worn. One was the ring his wife also wore, which came from his parents. By this time, all the Kleenex in my bag, all the Kleenex in the room perhaps, all the Kleenex in the universe was gone. After he had finished speaking. Needless to say, I was in a reflective mood when I arrived home that night. I was supposed to write a blog on Easter for Joey's website. But all I could think of was that scene. How the father in the midst of his own pain, grief and mourning at his own loss, chose to bless the children that he loved. And I thought of our Heavenly Father and our Jesus and of Jesus who at the expense of his own trials, extreme pain and cruel death, chose to pay the price we couldn't pay to win a prize we couldn't win. And how Easter, to me, is somehow another birthday of Jesus. Christmas, we celebrate his birth on earth as a man. Easter, we celebrate his freedom from his earthly body and his life reunited with his Father in heaven. Most of all, we celebrate his win. He punched death in the face and rendered it powerless. Praise God. He rendered sin toothless in its efforts to bite us and hold us captive in its grip. And all I could say was, thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for your heaven birthday And thank you for my friends. We think so much of this life on earth when we really should think of where we are spending our other birthday. Do you know where you're spending your eternity birthday? John 11, 25, 26 says, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? Do you believe this? 
You see, even in the saddest moment, this man, dudes, Tanabe, can celebrate. Even in a sad moment of loss, he can bless his loved ones only because he understood the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And if we have the same kind of understanding, yes, we will die. Yes, we will lose loved ones in our lives. They may go ahead of us. But even as they go ahead, we can celebrate and say, Abangan mo ako. Dadating din ako. Because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. And because on the third day, He rose again. And the tomb, even today, is empty. Amen? Can you please stand up on your feet. I think this is a time for celebration. Bagamat medyo mabigat ang dating ng sulat, I believe just like dudes tanabe, we can celebrate. Amen? I'd like to give everyone an opportunity to meditate and think about everything that has been said. Maaring merong isa o dalawa dito sa room na to ngayon. That you've been hearing about resurrection, you've been hearing about the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, but you have not really accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. And so all of this is foreign to you. And this is why I'd like to take this opportunity to pray for you. With eyes closed and heads bowed down. If you feel you are somebody the Holy Spirit is talking to. Kinakausap ka ng Holy Spirit ngayon at sinasabing kailangan mo si Jesus sa buhay mo. Matagal ka nang tumatakbo palayo sa Panginoon. Today is your day. Today, you can declare Him Lord and Savior. The Bible says, if you if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. I would like you to have that opportunity to do just that. Magpe-pray po tayo. If you agree dun sa sasabihin kong prayer, declare it with your mouth. Say it aloud and believe it in your heart that Jesus is indeed Lord. Amen? If you're in the audience, share the moment with us by just extending your hand towards them. Lord Jesus, thank you for coming to earth. Maraming salamat na nagkatawang tao kayo dahil mahal na mahal mo ako Tinanggap mo yung kaparusahan ng aking mga kasalanan. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Today, I admit I am a sinner at ako ang dapat ipako sa krus. Maraming salamat. Kinuha ninyo yung aking kaparusahan. Today, I accept you as my Lord and as my Savior. I confess my sins and I ask for forgiveness. Thank you that you said that if I confess my sins, you are faithful and are just to forgive me for my sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Maraming salamat, Panginoon, that today I have been cleansed as I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Starting today, do with me as you want. Make me the person that you want me to be. Maraming salamat, Panginoon. This is my prayer in your most holy name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Palakpakan po natin, Panginoon. Lord, we thank you so much for what you have done. We celebrate your victory. You are the risen Lord. Lord, be honored, be glorified in our lives. I ask for a special blessing upon each and every one of us today and in the days to come. May we live in victory because our God is alive. We thank you, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone says, Amen and Amen. You're dismissed. God bless you. And see you next week.